there is one Pokemon so rare, so incomprehensibly unique, its mere existence can break the minds of any who behold it. Most choose to simply believe it a fantasy, lest we die striving for a jewel we may never have. But I am not one of those people. I know for certain that this Pokemon, the universe's white whale, truly does exist. How can I be so sure? <laughs> because I have one. Today, I break down the math of what Pokemon is statistically the rarest in the game and how I managed to become the only person in history to actually catch one. Richard, hit that intro. If you've seen any of my videos about Pokemon recently, you'll know that it's all just math. Every attack you use, every Pokemon you find, every step you take, it's all just a facade of numbers. Heck, even the move facade is just a series of variables. So, figuring out which Pokemon was statistically the rarest possible wasn't really all that difficult. I just had to do some multiplication. But before we get into all the super fun math, I want you all to take a moment and leave your guesses in the comments down below. What do you think is the rarest Pokemon possible? Any guess is valid. There are no wrong answers here. Well, well, no, that's not true. There's a lot of wrong answers and really only one right answer, but don't worry, I won't judge. Got your guesses in? Well, let's see if you're right. In this Pokeball here, I hold a Pokemon so rare that I can guarantee the world has never seen before and will likely never see again. You ready? All right, well, allow me to introduce to you all... Brenda. Let me explain. The first thing that probably immediately jumped out to you is the color scheme. Spinda usually looks like this, cream colored with orange spots, but mine has green spots. This, for those of you who aren't familiar, is what's called a shiny Pokemon. Basically, anytime you run into a wild Pokemon, it has a very small chance of having an alternate color scheme. How small of a chance? Well, in generations two through five, every wild Pokemon has a base chance of one in 8,192 of being shiny. In generation six onward, they have the odds to one in 4,096. So the most obvious place to start for the rarest Pokemon is a shiny Pokemon from generations two through five. Also, yes, there's a lot of methods that you can use to increase shiny odds, but you'll soon see that none of them will work in this particular case. No, unless you're some sick hacker, it's gonna take you an average of over 8,000 encounters until you find that sweet, sweet sparkly boy. And I would never stoop so low as to cheat in order to get a shiny Pokemon as a visual aid quickly for a video. What do you think I am? Some kind of mon monster? No, a full odd shiny Pokemon is already pretty rare, but baby, we haven't even scratched the surface. Notice anything else different between these two Spindas? That's right, the spots are a little different between the two. Most Pokemon of the same species look exactly identical to one another. There are a couple that have different forms, maybe some slight gender differences, regional variants, stuff like that. Spinda has just a few more forms than that, clocking in at just under four Billion! Yep, someone at Game Freak woke up one morning and said, hey, you know what would be cool? If we give this little drunk bear more variations than the total population of China, India, all of the European Union, and the United States. Combined. For those of you who don't know how Spinda works, which, let's be honest, is probably most of you, it's a freaking Spinda. Kind of useless. The pattern of every single Spinda is determined by its personality value. Sounds fun, like one of those overly long quizzes you can take where it tries to assign you a specific personality group and then you can read through the little description at the end and be like, oh my god, this is literally me. I feel so seen right now. If that was your first thought, then I'm afraid I have failed you, my student. What have I been telling you since the beginning? Say it with me, Pokemon is just math. Yeah, the personality value or encryption constant, as it was later renamed to take all the illusion of fun out of it, is just a long number that the game generates for every single Pokemon to determine its like ability, stats, gender, stuff like that. And in the case of Spinda, the exact position 
of its spots. There is a grand total of 4,294,967,295 different possible combinations of personality values, which means in theory, there are that many possible combinations of Spinda spots. However, according to some person who's way smarter than me and edits the trivia section of Bulbapedia, some of these combinations happen to look indistinguishable from one another. So in reality, there's only 3,945,136,128 possible combinations. And you know what? Reading this article about encryption constants makes my brain turn to mush, so I'll just take their word for it. But enough about encryption constants. They're confusing and lame, so we're moving on. After all, it's time to talk about something equally as math intensive. Oh, <laughs> joy! Next up is individual values. Again, no, not some personality quiz where you can go, oh my god, I'm gonna attack 13 speed 28. That means we're compatible. Have you ever noticed that two of the same Pokemon at the exact same level can have slightly different stats? Well, that's because a Pokemon stat is determined by this monster of a formula and is affected by its base stats, which is determined by its species, its nature, which we'll get into later, its effort values or EVs, which aren't important here and which I will relish cutting from the script, and its individual values or IVs. Basically, this is a random variable that gets generated for each of a Pokemon's stats when you first find it and, in the earlier generations at least, cannot be changed. It's kind of like Pokemon genetics. They basically just exist to make each Pokemon feel a little unique and make the regular gameplay less predictable. And luckily, for our purposes here at least, they're really not all that complicated. Basically, each of a Pokemon's stats has a random IV ranging from 0 to 31, weirdly specific, but okay. The higher the IV, the better. These values are not shown to you as the player at all, but using some online calculators, I was able to determine that Brenda has this exact IV spread. Honestly, it's not great, but I think that actually works in our favor. A hacker or competitive player might be inclined to seek out a Pokemon with perfect IVs across the board, but nobody would be crazy enough to go out of their way to get this C- minus of a Pokemon. But what are the odds of finding a Pokemon with this exact stat spread? Well, it's pretty simple actually. An IV can range from 0 to 31, so that's 32 possible values. The odds of having an IV for a single stat that matches Brenda's exactly is just 1 in 32. And to find the odds of all 6 IVs matching Brenda's, we just raise that to the power of 6. I can feel all your attention starting to drift with all this math, so I'll breeze through the next few quickly. Brenda is female, and any Spinda has a 50-50 chance of being female. Natures are another thing that affects your base stats. Basically, it just raises one stat and lowers another. My Brenda is the type of woman who gets others to do her work for her, so you can bet she's relaxed 24-7. There are 25 natures in total, so the odds of being relaxed is only 1 in 25. Brenda also has the ability own tempo, but any Spinda also has a 50% chance of having tangled feet instead. Also, for those of you who are curious about how all this relates to the personality values and the spot orientation that I was talking about earlier, since both spot orientation and ability, gender, and nature are all determined by this one value, could a Spinda with this exact spot pattern actually have any other ability or anything? Uh, honestly, I have no idea. I I think so, but I'll be real, I barely understood that question as I was asking it. And that just about brings us to the end of our search, but there's one final variable to discuss here. This Spinda is from Heart Gold and Soul Silver, caught in the Sprout Tower. This was no accident. No, see, Spinda can be found in a couple of different places throughout the franchise, but is usually pretty common on the routes where it's available. However, in the three towers of the Johto region in Generation 4 specifically, it has the lowest encounter rate. First of all, in order to even have a chance of encountering a Spinda here at all, you need to have beaten the Elite Four and traveled to the Kanto region to get the National Dex. Then, if you come back to one of these towers and tune your Pokegear radio to the Pokemon Music Channel on specifically Wednesdays, you'll hear the Hoenn sounds begin to play. If 
and only if you have these sounds playing when you encounter a Pokemon, you now have a chance of running into a Spinda. None of that actually affects the odds at all, I just thought it was neat. Anyway, if you're playing on a Wednesday, or just change the date on your system like I did, every encounter you have will have a 20% chance of being a Spinda. And with that last step, we've got a whole bunch of numbers for each of these things happening individually. In order to find out the odds of all these things happening at the same time, we just need to multiply them all together. So, doing the math, every encounter you get in the Sprout Tower with the Hoenn sounds playing has a 1 in 1.73 times 10 to the 25 chance of being Brenda. That's well, quite frankly, impossible to wrap your brain around, so let me help you out. If you and a friend each picked a random star in the universe, and no, I'm not talking about like the stars you can see in the night sky, I mean every star in the entire universe, both observable and unobservable, if our estimates on how many stars exist are approximately correct, then the odds of you and your friend picking the same exact star is one order of magnitude more than you running into this exact same Spinda. Does that put it into perspective any better? No, no, I, I suppose I did have to use the entirety of the unknown unknown portion of the universe as a reference point, didn't I? Huh. All right, all right, how about this? If you encountered a Pokemon every second and started when the universe itself began, right at the moment of the Big Bang, an estimated 13.8 billion years ago, if you encountered a Pokemon a second, non-stop, since that moment, you would likely be approximately, uh, yes, uh, 0% of the way done with your search. In fact, under these assumptions, it would take you around 550 quadrillion years to find Brenda, which would put you well into the degenerate era of the universe where star formation has long since ceased and the universe has begun its slow march towards the inevitable heat death of all things. The truth though, is that you can't encounter a Pokemon every single second. I contemplated doing an extra bit here where I would incorporate the odds of encountering a Pokemon with each step in the game so I could figure out roughly the odds of finding Brenda with each in-game step. But honestly, at this point, I think we can evoke every engineer's favorite word, negligible. Basically, the odds of finding this Spinda are so incredibly small already that anything else we would add on top of it is just a drop in the bucket. Anything multiplied by zero is still zero. And if we can't assume that five times 10 to the negative 26 is approximately equal to zero, then what can we do? And there you have it. Every step you take, every move you make, every bond you break, every breath you take, you have a better chance of being struck by lightning, hit by a meteor, winning the lottery, and having a heart attack, and surviving all at once than encountering this exact same Spinda that I have. Or really, any specific form of shiny Spinda, but you know. Now, you could make the argument that this spin I caught wasn't all that rare. I mean, sure, encountering a full odd shiny Pokemon without cheats is certainly pretty good, but it's not universe breaking. Finding one Brenda isn't the tricky part, it's finding the second exact match. But does that mean that I have single-handedly created a being more rare than a single star in the night sky? accomplishing a feat that the universe itself could not hope to do for quadrillions of years? Does that make me some sort of being with a power of creation akin to, or maybe even surpassing a god? Well, I mean, statistically speaking, yeah. Yeah, I think that's exactly what I've done here. No, no, no.